We all know that China is a massive nation, but it's easy to forget that Tibet takes up nearly a quarter of China's territory, comprising the highest region of the earth, with its apex being Mount Everest. The Tibetan Empire emerged in the 7th century, but with the fall of the empire, the region soon divided into a variety of territories. The dominant religion in Tibet is Tibetan Buddhism, with a long history of oral transmission of its teachings. An emphasis on oral transmission are more important than the printed word, as it allows their occult knowledge to be kept from those who should not hear them. Occult in this context simply means secret. That said, let's get to some of those secrets, shall we? Tibetan Buddhist chanting is a subgenre of throat singing, mainly practiced by monks near Mongolia. Music, and the use of sound in general, has always been recognized as having a powerful effect on human consciousness. More and more research into the science of sound shows us why different kinds of music and sounds have the effect that they do on the body, emotions, mind, and spirit. By rhythmically chanting, for example, the priests in the healing temples of ancient Egypt around the 4th century BC induced their clients into what is called temple sleep by hypnosis and auto-suggestion. Something similar was practiced by the ancient Druids, who were also known to chant over their subject until the trance-like state was entered. Drugs were not necessary, however herbs were used to enhance verbal suggestions by native healers in pre-Columbian Central and South America. It would appear that deliberate alterations of consciousness have been employed since ancient times with many shamans considering such practices as journey to the upper or lower world or conversing with spirit or animal guides. Shamanic healing and trance procedures are carefully scripted in a manner similar to many hypnotic processes and they can incorporate Procedures such as fasting, self-mutilation, sweat lodges, sleep deprivation, continual dancing, plunging into ice-cold water, all sorts of different kinds of rhythmic activity such as drumming, all in an effort to create different and more enlightening octaves of consciousness. Tibetan chanting is said to have this effect, but it is not the only method where vibration and resonance is employed by the monks. According to Tibetan oral tradition, the existence of singing bowls date back to at least the time of Buddha and are used to produce sounds which invoke a deep state of trance-like relaxation, which naturally assists one in entering into a heightened meditation, the ultimate goal being to bypass the ego and attain healing, wisdom, health, and of course enlightenment. Now let's take a moment to explore the phenomena of sound and vibration. Please make sure your speakers are not turned up too high. As we see the effect the vibration has on the water, we are reminded that our bodies are composed mostly of liquid, which also transfers these sound frequencies throughout, and as the vibrations impact the sympathetic nervous system, our brain waves synchronize, theoretically, to the vibrations of the bulls, and there are different sizes for different tones, and some even made of crystal. The Nanaimo Indians of Vancouver Island 
would fall unconscious in order to incorporate what they call healing spirits necessary for healing. It was also noted that Alaskan Eskimo shamans use rhythmic drumming and chanting to induce a hypnotic trance. Eskimos of Eastern Greenland would enter a fairly deep trance state by continuously rubbing stones against each other. This monotonous and lonely behavior would help them connect with and encounter a helping spirit. Now let us listen to how a practitioner describes this phenomenon. Imagine standing at a pond, throwing a stone into the water. As soon as the stone enters the water, concentric circles appear, which we all remember from childhood games. Something similar occurs within the body. Because about 70 to 80 percent of the body consists of water, the sounds are able to move through it in an oscillating manner. The sound enables the client to feel how the waves move through the body. They feel the free flow as well as the blocks. Where there are such blocks, the client can feel how they steadily loosen with every further wave of sound. This state of letting go is extremely effective. And because the client is in the alpha state, This new experience enters the subconscious. There it eclipses the old feelings and the unblocked body experience increases. This means that the sounds of the singing bowl cause doubts and anxieties to disappear and a feeling of freedom expands. Maybe you will notice that the sounds of the singing bowl change. They are prolonged. They become more pure. This is because the tissue in this area has become more relaxed. This is a sound that fits this area of the body. The higher tones touch and stimulate the resonance of the upper parts of the body. Color and light have been utilized by healers for thousands of years. For example, Indian medicine, ancient Egyptian culture, and traditional Chinese healing. Some practitioners have combined their implementation of sound therapy with color therapy, where the use of color, especially projected colored lights, are used to enhance the holistic experience. Holistic, by the way, means considering the mind, body, and spirit. And the use of visible spectrum of light and color to affect a person's mood and physical or mental health is also documented in studies. Chromotherapy is the science of using colors to adjust body vibrations to frequency that result in health and harmony, where each color possesses frequency of a specific vibration and each vibration is related to different physical symptoms. Light can actually be broken down into a seven color spectrum and in theory an imbalance of any of those colors can manifest itself in physical and mental symptoms. So the practitioner exposes the deficient color spectrum to the specific body areas. For example red or shades of pink are believed to increase the pulse raise blood pressure, and increase the rate of breathing. Red would be applied to support circulatory and nervous functions. Yellow is thought to generally strengthen the body and activates internal tissues used to purify the skin, help with indigestion, strengthen the nervous system, treat glandular disease, hepatitis, and lymphatic disorders, and assist metabolism. Green a color associated with harmony provides a neutral, positive, calming effect.
keep in mind, I'm not making any medical claims, and I'm providing these videos for educational purposes only. That said, green is believed traditionally to provide anti-infectious, antiseptic, and regenerative stimulation. Violet is used to calm the nervous system, soothe and relax muscles, as well as for emotional disorders and to treat psychosis. Brainwave entrainment is a method to stimulate the brain into entering a specific state, encouraging the brainwaves to align to the desired frequency provided by external audio stimuli. By playing a certain frequency in one ear and a slightly different frequency in the other ear, the brain will entrain to match the difference between the two frequencies. This brief demonstration will help illustrate how this works. Headphones are not really necessary. This is simply a demonstration. Brainwave entrainment is nothing new. The ancient Greeks used flickering sunlight shining through a spinning wheel to induce altered states. And ceremonial chambers acoustically tuned to specific brainwave frequencies have been found dating back to the Bronze Age, which raises another possibility as an original, practical use for the echoing, rhythmic vibrations of the Australian instrument called the didgeridoo. My name is Robert Sepper. I'm an anthropologist working independently, exploring many topics that are shunned in the mainstream. If you like my presentations and find them of value, kindly consider supporting my research through a tax-deductible donation to Atlantean Gardens that produces these educational videos and publishes and disseminates my books available on Amazon.com. I appreciate the positive feedback that I keep getting, which is partially why I make so many of these videos. I also am encouraged by the comments and even entertained by them, thank you. Please leave a suggestion if you would like me to cover a specific topic. Someone had requested this one. I hope you found it interesting and don't forget to share it if you did and I will see you next time.